All right, guys, I was talking to a buddy today, and he said he kind of got bit by this target panic bug, so I wanted to go over a few things, or I told him I'd go over a few things and discuss some of the things you can do to work on that, how we can fix target panic. First thing I want to go over that's really important to this is how you develop target panic in the first place, how you want to fire your release. So I'm shooting this whippersnapper thumb button right here. And I've got three different styles and we'll go over each one of them. But the way you want to fire these to prevent or eliminate target panic to start with is to do a surprise release like you would a rifle. So with this, I, I shoot it with two fingers. And then when I get set, I've got a whole shooting routine I go through and in the off season, that'll be another blog or maybe several of them we can go through some shooting stuff but just for talking about releases and target panic what I do once I get set in where I want it is I get some pressure on this thumb trigger and then what you're going to do is you're going to pull into your shot and also kind of squeeze your finger so it rotates that thumb button into your thumb there and that's just going to fire just like this maybe so now a lot of guys just punch the trigger and you can always tell when somebody's punching the trigger if your hand doesn't come back when you fire you know you're anticipating the shot and that's usually what leads to this target panic because next thing you know you're on target and you're getting ready to punch the trigger and all of a sudden you're off target so then you stop Next thing you know, you're either freezing up or you're moving across the target and hitting the trigger and all different things start happening in your mind. All of a sudden you just, bam. So that's kind of the start of it. We'll demonstrate the proper way to shoot an index finger as well. Well, I say proper way, there's some guys that shoot really well punching the trigger. You know, it's all about repeatability is the thing and eliminating target panic. The two things, you know, for me that make me or get me to shoot the best possible on any given day is how well I'm holding that day. So is my pin just, you're always gonna have some movement, but is that movement just right on the X, you know, just a little bit of movement there? So if I'm holding really good that day, and then the second thing is how clean those shots break. When they break clean, what I'm meaning is I'm not anticipating the shot at all. Because when you anticipate, you grab the bow, you flinch, you move, you do all kinds of stuff. So if those shots are breaking clean, I'm usually shooting pretty good. So like now an index finger, what you most people want to stay away from is triggering this with the very end of your finger. Because that's real sensitive, you can feel that. And that forces you to think about it. Because you can feel when you're on that trigger and then you start you know, anticipating that shot going off. So what I'd recommend is going down closer to your second knuckle there, getting into the trigger deeper. So that's going to be just like the thumb button now. So get some pressure on the trigger where you can feel it. And then I want to concentrate on aiming. I don't want to concentrate on the release. So I'm saying to myself, aim, aim, aim. And while I'm doing that, when I'm on target, then I'm going to start to pull into this release. So just start, you got some pressure and then pull. Just like that. And I'm going to pull straight back, push straight forward. And if that's a clean shot, my hand should break down over my shoulder here. If you anticipate that, then, you know, sometimes you see guys that, that don't even move. Their hand doesn't move. You know you're anticipating that. Sometimes I watch some stuff on outdoor TV, and you'll see people get a run and start at their trigger. I mean, they're up here and just bam. Which, you know, if you can repeat that, you can shoot accurate, but the problem is the target panic starts in. So that's what we're going to talk about today, how to eliminate that, or at least work on eliminating it. I think we've probably all dealt with that at some point. I know I've fought it, you know, to different levels. I've had buddies that, you know, they'd be shooting and say, man, my, my pen keeps locking up below the target. I, it's like I can't even lift my bow up high enough or it's too heavy to lift it up on the target, and, and that's another form of target panic. You know, the anxiety, you're just, is locking your, your mind is locking you down below the target because of the anxiety, so. There's a lot of different forms of it, and you know, some better, some worse, but one of the things that 
is beneficial. Well, before we get into that, I'll show you one more style of release that's a good training aid. And that's a hinge. Probably most of you have heard of this. It just has a, you know, the trigger drops off a half moon is how that fires. And if you haven't shot these before, I recommend getting something like this to practice with just so you get the hang of it. When you draw these, you've got to have all the pressure here on your index and thumb, index finger and thumb, when you pull that back. Otherwise, that right there is what can happen. I have punched myself in the face with these before. So you pull them back like this, and then you're going to shoot it basically the same way. You start to get pressure back here on your finger, and then pull through the shot, rotate that at the same time. Bam! That's a really good training aid for target panic because you really can't anticipate that or it's difficult to anyway. The other thing to think about is how sensitive do you want your trigger set up? Now your pros are going to say that they don't want it very sensitive. That You really want to be able to really pull into that and not be scared of it. If you get too much of a hair trigger, then a lot of times you're scared to even touch the trigger and you know that makes your target panic worse. I like the, the trigger firm, but I don't like much travel to it. So that's the way all these are set up. Because what happens for me is I'm telling myself, aim, aim, aim. And I'm thinking about aiming the whole time. And if you can feel your trigger moving, I don't like that because it causes me to have to think about the release. So I just want that to happen without having to think about it. So there's just, there's no travel that I can feel anyway way these are set up so I start pulling I can't feel anything and then all of a sudden that's just gonna break bam just like that so I, that's when I shoot the best is when I can just concentrate on aiming and then subconsciously the, the release just fires that's always the way I've shot them the best now I know some of the some of the pro guys will shoot a hinge and they'll have it set to where you got to rotate the thing a long ways before it goes off. And, and they like that better because they're used to, you know, then you have to work the release. And they think that's better for the target panic. And if they're pro shooters, well, maybe they're right on that. But I tend to shoot them so there's very little travel. But I want enough pressure so you do have to get into the, you, I mean, you feel it. And you do have to get into the trigger a little bit on them. So how are we going to fix target panic? A few things you can work on. You guys have probably heard of blank bail shooting. You know, just some kind of backstop, whatever your target is, but don't put a bullseye on it. And get up nice and close, and you're going to work on form and release. So you just get up, say, 10 feet from the target, and there, there's no bullseye, and you just get up there, think about your form, and you're going to think about, you know, how you're going to release like we just talked about. You're going to pull into that shot, rotate into it, and you're going to do that for, you know, most, most people would recommend you want to shoot like that for maybe a week, and then give a give a target a try at that point so blank bail shooting is always a always a good method seems to help some guys i know the the buddy i was just talking to he said one thing that's helping him a little bit is getting up super close to the target and you're going to do the same thing you don't need a bullseye on it or something to aim at because that's kind of what brings this anxiety on this target panic and he gets up just super close and does the same thing just just focus on your form and focus on that release, how you want to execute the shot. So you're only three feet away, so you're not scared of missing, you know. So, you know, get into your shot up close and just psh, make sure your hand's coming back. Then you know you didn't anticipate that shot. My favorite one is go ahead and put a bullseye on the target. Draw back and aim, but don't fire your release. This is the one I've used before to work on target panic that seemed to work the best for me. Is you just keep aiming, because a lot of guys have trouble even getting that pin to go on the bullseye. And so this is an exercise that really helps that. You'll find that once your mind realizes you're not going to fire the shot, you'll get that pin just to set right where you want it. And so you're never, you're never actually going to shoot, or you're going to at some point, but not in this exercise. So you just leave that pin right there on the center, your shot starts to break down, let down. Then do it again, draw back, let it sit on the center. Pretty soon you'll see that your, your pin just wants to sit right there where you want it. You're calm. Once you do this for several days up to a week, I mean, depending on how you're doing, you're going to have to start introducing shooting into it at some point. 
So you just go back with the same mindset. Okay, I'm not going to shoot. It's just setting there, just setting there. Okay, now transition into firing a shot. So now work that release like we talked about and shoot. Now at any point, if you feel your target panic is getting worse or coming back because, you, you know, you just worked through all that, then go, go right back to not, not firing your release. That's the one that's, that's been the best for me, and that's the one I would recommend trying. Let's, uh, let's fire a few of these and try some of these techniques, and we'll, we'll talk about them as we shoot so you can see them actually demonstrated. All right, guys, I'm going to start out with this hinge here. Like I said, this is mainly a training aid to help with target panic. There are some guys that hunt with this, but, I mean, it's, it's definitely for advanced, advanced level guys that if you're hunting with this, you've been shooting a long time. So you got to have all your pressure on your thumb and your index finger so you don't punch yourself in the face. <clears throat> that was definitely a surprise release. You see how my hand just came flying back? And these, you can you shoot them two different ways. You kind of rotate your hand and then pull into it at the same time. Like I said, once it drops off that half moon, it'll fire. Let's do the same thing with the whipper snapper. And I just shoot this for with two fingers like I do all of them, but you could shoot a third finger if, if you want. All right. Once I get set up where I want, then I'm going to get my thumb on the trigger and get a little pressure on it, and then I'll start to pull. <clears throat> it's like so. If you hear that, it kind of sounds like when the bow goes off and like knocks the wind out of me. That's because I'm holding my breath. I shoot, uh, what I do is I exhale when I'm drawing back, and then I'll... When I get everything settled in, I'll take about a three-quarter breath in. Then I'll hold my breath to, to hold steady. Everybody's kind of got their own thing they do with that, but I try to do it the same each time. Keep in mind, too, guys, when you switch back and forth to different releases, your impact may change. So don't just you know grab one and go hunting with it and without shooting it because I know for me I mean my impact would be two three inches different between a hinge and this just because of the way you hold it and the way you pull into it now this would be what most guys are shooting right here this is the wise guy by spot hog all right first let's do the exercise I was talking about where you just hold on target and don't shoot totally changes my anchor that's going to be a little tougher to shoot, but all right, shots breaking down and let down. Had about six or seven seconds where that pin was just hovering right there on the X. And keep in mind, you're always going to have some movement, so you got to accept that movement. But you know, some days are better than others. Some days that movement's not much, other days it's bad. Then you throw a little wind in there. Let's fire this one this time just to see what that looks like. Just like so. All right, let's go see what we did down here. I don't think we did any kind of crazy shooting, but... All right, guys, I'm going to do a little practicing with this hinge to work on my shooting as well. I'm not... This is the... First, I've shot it this year, so I'm not sure where my impact is with it, but we'll find out. <clears throat> I should have let that one down, honestly. Shot started to break down a little bit. I was holding just beautifully in the middle, and then I started to get a little, little movement there. I should have let that down. Seem to be hitting a little to the right with this, but that's okay. 
we're going to go right back to the spot hog after this anyway, so. It's a good thing I'm shooting at a five spot because so far all three of those are in the same spot and on different dots. All right. Four out of those five were right in the same spot on the five dot. Unfortunately, not in the middle, but let's go take a look. All right, we're going to go back to the spot hog. This is the release I'm shooting to hunt with. Need an X. I need an X right here. Bingo! Bang ho! <laughs> that was a pretty good one there. Dead center X. Need four more of them. I've been shooting since I was, I think I was probably about eight or nine. I started shooting bow and I, I kind of fell in love with it. I've been shooting ever since. Used to do a little bit of competing there around Michigan. Shot the ASA Federation Tour a couple of years and I'd go to all of the local 3D tournaments. I think what I love about it is you can just never be perfect. So you're always competing. Like for me, I'm always competing with myself. I come out here and shoot a five spot and see how good I can do and then you know, try and top that the next time you shoot. I think just a hair to the right on that one, maybe high right. Not holding quite as good as I'd like to be. Sometimes they're setting in there pretty good, and other times I'm moving. My movement's basically around the whole white on some of these, so. But you just have to accept that movement. If you try and fight that, then that's where your target panic will set in. You just have to accept that your pin's going to move some. I think we smacked an X on that one. That one was just sitting right in there beautifully. I kept thinking, fire, fire. That's where, that's where you can punch the trigger right there. You're wanting it to fire, but... You want to stick to your guns and just work through the shot. You notice I always let the bow hang from my release when I set my hand in the grips. I do that the same every time too, so I've got a whole routine I go through. We'll go over that at some point. I don't know where that one hit. I think a little bit to the right. Let's go take a look, see what we did. Pretty good shooting with the spot hog. I'd like that one back and we'd have five spots. That's the fun thing about shooting. You come out here and you shoot a 300 round. The best I've ever done is a 300 with 56 spots, which is this center circle. But typically right now, I haven't been shooting a lot. I'll be somewhere in the 40s for spots. 299, 300 right in there. Well, anyway, I know how much you guys like watching us hunt out of these blinds. Not. We're going back to a blind this evening. I wanted to go to a tree stand, but we just don't have a good setup. I wanted to go after that wide eight, but it just doesn't set up well on an east-southeast wind. So we're going to go back after that split G2 buck. Let's go shower up and give her a go.